this morning I had to change of plans. I was going to take, uh, I was going to drill my backfield, but I decided that I'm going to drill seed early tomorrow morning instead. So this morning I did take animals to the sale barn. If y'all take a look around, I don't have those uh, four animals uh, that I had been saying that I'm going to take to the sale barn next. So those animals are gone. It was a heifer and three steers. My brangus animal, my black white face animal, my uh, I had a uh, I had a little guy in there too. My little crossbreed, my little uh, Angus crossbreed, the the kind of a tall, you uh, good looking animal. But he's uh, he's over at uh, they they went to the sale barn this morning. So instead of uh, drilling my field, I took them to the sale barn. But here tomorrow morning, I'll be drilling my field. Oh, well, yep. Uh, I didn't want to give the pigeons a, a whole day to just peck at the field. But like uh, in terms of just running like a uh, 10, 15 cattle, these animals are maybe uh, 450 pounds, 500 pounds, maybe about 500 pounds. I have enough grass out here to feed uh, 10 cattle, zero problem. I mean, this is enough grass. I still have this uh, sorghum Sudan grass. It's kind of a stubble at this point, but I still do have enough out here. In terms of grazing, just 10, uh, 10 lightweight cattle. I can graze 10 lightweight cattle out here, zero issues as of right now. Every time these animals eat a mouthful of grass, I've made a very, very, very good return on my investment, right? Because I, I mean, I put money into the grass. The animals, they walk around and they eat it. If they eat it, every mouthful of grass that they eat, I've made a very good return on my investment. But this is also one reason right here. I'm very good at growing sorghum Sudan grass, but I don't like growing sorghum Sudan grass because when the plant material dies, it looks like this right here. Y'all can see the wheat coming up, the, the little bit of wheat coming up in it. But it's just, um, this sorghum Sudan grass has just covered the floor. It's just completely littered the floor with uh, with plant material. And so all this stuff right here, you know, uh, I can't run a drill over this field. Uh, I can't run a drill over this because it's just going to, the seed's just going to sit on top of the plant stubble. And so that's why I'm going to be planting rye grass on this instead of, uh, instead of winter wheat. I do have some winter wheat coming up on it, but it ain't really coming up that well. And so th this is my, uh, my big reason for, uh, Maybe next year I try something else. Instead of growing sorghum Sudan grass, I try growing something else. It's just because it leaves all this dead plant material all over. I'm gonna pull this weed real fast. But it leaves all this dead plant material everywhere. And so this stuff, I don't really like, uh, I can't really plant on it. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go over the top of it and put some, uh, put some rye grass on it and it'll grow in, it'll be just fine. But in terms of grazing, just, you know, 10 cattle like this, 10, 15 cattle like this, I have more than enough grass right now, even as is to feed 10, 15 cattle with zero issues. I mean, these animals, they could walk around and eat grass all day if they wanted. You know, if I'm going to raise you know, five, six, seven, eight animals an acre, that's when I need to really start uh, getting this stuff fine tuned in. If I'm gonna, if I, if I really want to raise my, uh, if I want to five, six, seven fold the amount of animals that I'm raising, I need to start fine tuning my uh, my uh, my uh, my crops. I guess I need to start fine tuning my grass. But in terms of raising animals like this, if I'm just gonna raise you know 15 animals, if I'm just gonna raise one to two animals an acre, especially if they're only 500 pounds, I have more than enough grass of, as of right now. I, I can feed these uh, animals on grass zero problem. These animals, they uh, yesterday they were walking around on this grass and they were chewing it up and. Uh, I was seeing that these animals, they got that big old grass gut on them. But these animals, they're going to put on weight very quickly. This grass is well fertilized. I know that it's kind of a janky grass, but it has been properly fertilized. It is growing in well. And these cattle, uh, they, they eat a lot of it. Yesterday, I was, I was realizing that my animals were already starting to swell up eating the grass. And so, uh, yep, I mean, it's okay. But tomorrow morning, I'm going to be drilling that backfield. I got a little bit of winter wheat coming up here. But uh, the uh, the people at the co-op they uh, they informed me incorrectly. They told me that uh, I needed uh, 50 pounds of winter wheat per acre, but I actually need to do 100. It's actually double. And so uh, 
Yep, I'm, I bought some extra bags of seed. This uh, this seed that I bought at the local store, it cost me a lot more than what it did at the co-op. At the co-op, it cost me $15 a bag. But at the uh, local store, it cost me $25 a bag. And so, uh, but I mean, it's okay. Uh, what am I gonna do, uh, drive an hour away to the co-op? I'm not going all the way up there to pick up 10 bags of seed. And so, but I got enough seed to cover my backfield. It'll be all right, I'm gonna drill it tomorrow morning. And then uh, I should be good to go. It's supposed to rain pretty heavily all uh, throughout Wednesday and Thursday. It's supposed to rain a lot, like over an inch is what the Weather Channel is forecasting. So I'll have to see. I did take animals to the sale barn this morning, but uh, these black Angus heifers that I brought in, these black Angus heifers, these small little calves, I actually have an opportunity. The uh, the man that I purchased these black Angus heifers from, he's uh, he's selling 50 of them right now. And so if I wanted to, I could purchase the 50 of them all. I also, I also got uh, my loan cleared today. And so my second loan did clear today. And, uh, but I, I applied for two more loans and I only got one more cleared. And so I, uh, the bank gave me $28,000, which is, I mean, it, 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 what, what I was, what I was, uh, looking to do, um, my, 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 my picture perfect plan was that the bank would give me 50,000 and I could utilize just credit. I could utilize just debt to uh, to purchase all of the assets that I needed. But things did not go perfectly. But it's okay because if the bank gives me twenty eight thousand, right, and I have uh, and I have thirty, and uh, when I sell all these animals, I'll have about thirty five thousand dollars in my bank account. And so if I have thirty five thousand dollars in my bank account and the bank gave me twenty eight thousand, if I'm looking to invest twenty two, if I'm looking to invest fifty thousand, I only need to put fifty thousand more dollars of my own money into it. And so even even after all of it's done, I still have about fifteen thousand dollars left over. And in about six months, I'll get another paycheck. And if I double that fifty thousand, I can pay the bank back. Uh, I can pay the bank back fifty thousand, and I can just keep the uh, the seventy-two thousand that's left over, or whatever. Oh wait, no. So if I made a hundred thousand and I owed the bank uh, twenty-eight, yeah, I can just keep the seventy-two thousand dollars that's left over. It's not a big deal. So it's not a real big deal that I have to put my own money into into, into running these cattle. It's not a big deal. I made a lot of money on them this year. It's not it's not that big of an issue. But in a picture perfect situation, the bank would have given me the $50,000 that I'm looking to invest into my farm. I would have utilized the $50,000 that the bank had given me and then just utilized the money that I had in my bank account to cover the monthly debt service costs. And then just uh, held on to my capital as a, uh, as a, if, if a worst comes to worst scenario. But I thought about it and I was like, you know what? You know me. You know when I when I look at what I'm doing, right, and, and I take a good look at what I'm doing. There, you know, the chances of me bombing out and just failing, just just flat out failing, it ain't really gonna happen, right? Like, you know, uh, I I ain't really worried about my investment going to zero. I got this little weed right here, but it's it's super thorny, and so I can't pull that with my hand. But uh. But I ain't really worried about it, right? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't on the top. It ain't even on on the uh, the top of my to worry about list, right? I mean, I ain't, I ain't worried about losing all my money in the cattle business. I'm a very, very, very capable cattle man. I mean, you know, when I look at what I've accomplished, there's zero reason for me to be worried, right? Why would I sit there and be worried? You know, I, I would be more focused on making my hundred thousand dollars than I would be about being worried about losing my money, right? I mean, realistically, like if I'm gonna go and make myself a hundred thousand dollars, you know, that's my top priority, right? Like I'm not really gonna sit here worried about anything else. I mean, you know, I mean that that that, that may that may sound horrible to some people. Oh my God, this guy only thinks about his money. You know, why he making so much money? He only thinks about money. But I mean, you know, it just is what it is. I mean, you know, I think that just about anybody, if they were looking at trying to make themselves a half a million dollars a year like me, you know, next year, my, my goal, you know, once I make $100,000, you know, this year, my goal is to reinvest 100000 And if I reinvest that 100000 and I go to half a million dollars a year, I mean, that's my number one priority, right? Like, what else am I going to worry about, right? Like, if I'm looking to make $40,000 a month, what else am I going to worry about? I got to pull some weeds. 
I mean, the only thing I'd be worrying about, the only thing I'd be thinking about is, make, is making myself that half a million, right? I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, what what else am I going to go do? You know, what, what else could possibly be more important than me making $40,000 a month right now? You see what I'm saying? I, uh, I mean, it, 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 the, it shrinks the list down very quickly. Like, if I'm genuinely looking to make myself that kind of money... And like this year, if I can make myself a hundred thousand dollars in six months running cattle on six acres, and out of that hundred thousand, I get to keep seventy-eight thousand. You know, like what else would I be worried about, right? I mean, like what else could I possibly worry about? I mean, it's the only thing, right? And so I got, I, I just got to make it happen. I ain't that worried about it. I ain't worried about losing a whole bunch of money or nothing like that. Because, well, okay, so let's say, right, let's say I bring in a whole lot of cattle and these are some good looking number one type cattle. They're, they're a commodity type heifer. I get them at 230 a pound at 330 pounds. I get them at 230 a pound and right now the market for these number one commodity type heifers is about uh, $2 a pound at, at just about... Uh, so if I take them to about uh, 750 pounds, the market price for these heifers right now is about a two dollars a pound. And so you know the, the you know as long as my you know but these animals that I brought in these black Angus uh, these black Angus animals, you know they're, they're good animals. And this man uh, this man that I know who who uh, who raises these these calves he he uh, he he has a ranch over here. And he and he raises these calves, but these right here, they're, they're good animals. They're good animals. These right here, they're good looking animals. They're good and they're stocky and they're and they're good looking. They're they're uh, they're they're good 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 quality animals. And so these kind of animals right here, if I could get 50 of them, I can make money on them. I just got to do my thing. I just got to do what I do, and I'll make money on them. I ain't worried about losing money on an animal like this. As long as these animals survive, and as long as I, you know, do what I know what I'm supposed to do, and do my and do and do what I know what I'm capable of doing, chances are drastically in my favor of, of making money. I ain't really at any risk of losing money. And you know, like when I start listing out my plans and the things that I, you know, the things that that I'm doing. Let's say that my, my, my big goal this year, right, in the next six months, my big goal is to make $100,000 running cattle on 10 acres. I mean, it's going to be my only priority, right? Like, why would I care about anything else, right? Anything that gets me closer to making the $100,000 a year, that's, my, that, that's what makes it on my priority list. If I'm looking to make a half a million dollars a year, if I'm looking to reinvest the $100,000 to make myself $40,000 a month, that's my priority list. Anything that gets me closer to the $40,000 a month, that's what makes it on the priority list and everything else goes out the window. I mean, you know, that's, I would think, I don't know anybody else that makes money like that, you know, make, making $40,000 a month, even making $10,000 a month. Like, you know, this is one thing that I figured out about the world is that if I walk around, right, and I say, oh man, I farm 10 acres, nobody really cares, right? Nobody really cares. But if I walk around and I say, man, I put $10,000 a month in my bank account farming 10 acres, a lot of people care. They go, how in the world did that happen? You know, the money is what's important. You know, that's also my thing. You know, it's like, you know, that's, you know, but a lot of people, they're going to say money's not important. Money's not important. This, that, this, that. Oh, man, you know, why, why, you know, why would I go out of my way to work that hard to make that kind of money in? And, you know, but when they hear about the money, it changes. I mean, you can you can see it changes them. Money is very important. And so, you know, I do have an opportunity to buy 50 heifers from this rancher. 50 of the same heifers that I purchased. I purchased a lot of seven of them. The bank's giving me $28,000. I got $28,000 sitting in my bank account that the bankers, uh, the bankers cleared me for yesterday. I got money that I've made myself from running cattle this year. You know, uh, if I got, you know, I, even if I put uh, fifteen thousand dollars of my own money into it and then take twenty thousand, twenty-eight thousand from the bank, and then I just hold on to about a twenty thousand of my own money. 
you know realistically if, if i if i invested fifty thousand into this chances are i will double it chances are i will double it you know i get all sorts of tax benefits and stuff for running this business i'm very good at running cattle i don't know anybody who's as good as me at running cattle objectively if anybody want to try i mean i'm always willing to compete you know i'm you know i mean it just is what it is right and at the end of the day the money speaks for itself but that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.